back. This is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. Yeah, I'd love to take you out like I said I would, honey, but it's too much month at the end of the money. See, I knew I heard it in a country song. This is Boomer Life on CL 650. I'm Joanne Sutton, and today we're speaking with Jim Doyle, Senior Financial Consultant with Investors Group Financial Services. And we're asking the big question, are you where you want to be financially? Well, a well-thought-out plan for your financial future is an integral part of building the life that you want for both yourself and for your family. And I think most of our listeners are very grateful that they don't need to think in terms of just surviving, but enjoying a good standard of living and feel fortunate to be able to share the success by adequately providing for their families and loved ones when they're no longer here. This also means enjoying the fruits of their labor while they're still here. So when it comes to protecting ourselves, our successes, and our families, Jim, what is one area of our financial lives that you suggest we review? Joanne, this is a fantastic question. Without a doubt, I would suggest that you make sure your current financial plan is integrated with an estate plan for today and for the future. Well, Jim, I'm not sure we've actually heard much about this in the past. What is an estate plan? An estate plan is about planning for life and establishing what you want to accomplish with your wealth now and into the future. But it's also a process of structuring the future disposition of current and projected assets, and it's more than drafting a will. So where would you suggest we start? For most people, the first time in your life that a will becomes imperative is when you have children. Forget about your assets for a minute. A will might seem like a hassle, but there's nothing com- that's nothing compared with the hassle your heirs will experience if you die without one. <laughs> You're not kidding. <laughs> of course, writing a will is also your chance to clarify who gets what in your estate. Consider how you might like your assets to be used or owned. Sorting out obligations to a business partner, first or second marriages, blended families or today's non-traditional families requires an end game in mind. It requires planning. And the urgency is raised if you have special needs children or charitable legacies to consider. There's many elements to be taken into consideration when planning your estate directives. Well, Jim, I don't think a lot of people are even aware of the numerous factors that may affect their estate plan. I'd probably agree. A good estate plan is not much different than a good financial plan. You need to begin with the process and do it early, before something happens. It's also likely it's going to evolve over time, so the plan must be reviewed periodically. For example, the legislation around charitable giving was amended three times in less than 18 months. Changing legislation is a prime example of why it benefits you to work with a financial professional like myself. Well, it seems logical to work with a professional when it comes to this type of stuff. Well, I mean, just think about it. If you weren't working with an estate lawyer or a financial planner like yourself with the proper credentials who understands all these intricacies involved in this area, how would you even know that you need to update your will? So where are we going to start with this one? The first place to start is to determine which asset you have and where you might like to see them going. Does an outright gift or bequest meet all of your needs, or is some sort of guidance needed beyond the present? You know, I love to ask families, you know, when their 19-year-old kid inherits, okay, and see what the parents' responses are. If I see the big whites of their eyes, I know I've hit a point. (laughs) It's the deer in the headlights. (laughs) Working with your financial planner and your legal and tax advisors can be a match made in heaven. Tax and probate need to be part of the consideration, but that part comes later. Trusts are also a great planning vehicle if you want to do more complex estate planning. Well, I can actually hear people thinking out loud now, aren't trusts just for the wealthy? I'd love to burst that bubble. Many average income Canadians can benefit from including trusts in their wealth management plans. To give you a bit of background as to why I'm speaking about trusts, I'm a TEP. That's a registered trust and estate practitioner. I don't draft wills, but I often start these conversations, and that's the key. One of my strengths is that I often understand the practical side of what is being considered and can arm you with talking points to bring to your legal professionals in easy-to-understand language. 
So why do you feel that so many people are intimidated by the thought of using trusts as part of their estate plan? Well, I think the industry language can be a bit off-putting, and then there's concerns about complexity. At times, the process may seem overwhelming, but with proper advice and financial guidance, you can help create clarity. And it doesn't have to be difficult. Oh, you've nailed it. Planning is so important, Jim. And that's why we're so thrilled to have you helping us out here. If you want more information on this, I'd encourage you to call Jim. You can always ask him a couple of questions. Here's his phone number, 604-682-5431. Once you've figured out what you want your trust to do for you, that's called settling the trust. And it's the legal term for setting up a trust. And family trusts are probably the most common example. This is where all the beneficiaries are family members. Of course, you'll want the services of a trust lawyer to help draft the terms of the trust. Well, I've actually heard of people using family trusts to pay for things like um, maybe private school tuitions or sports activities. And of course, trusts can be used for some pretty interesting tax planning. What can we actually expect when we begin setting up a trust? Generally, the lawyer drafts the trust deed, but make sure you involve your financial planner and your tax advisor as well. In terms of a trust creation, there are usually three relationships that are important to be aware of. In the simplest terms, the settler who puts the assets into the trust, then there's the trustee who fulfills the terms of the trust, and then there's the beneficiary who gets what's in the trust. Okay, I'm just trying to work through this. So if a grandparent wants to put money aside for a grandchild um, like uh, on their passing, could that be done in the form of a trust? Yes, it could. If the trust comes into existence as part of the will, we often refer to that as a testamentary trust. The tax treatment is not as favorable as it used to be, but in terms of a planning tool, it may serve to ensure your estate wishes are clear. You'll want to talk to your advisors to cover much of the detail we won't be able to get into in this short segment. I just wanted to introduce the subject if I could. Okay. I think what I'm taking away from here is you can set up a trust, but it doesn't have to be part of the will. Well, you could. That's correct. Okay, good. I'm on, so far, I'm on the right path, and ho hopefully the listeners are following along with us as well. Uh, so could you give us a very general overview as to how you might consider a trust to solve a problem and some of the other types of trusts that might benefit our listeners? I'd be happy to. And here are some of the potential uses of a trust. Okay. To protect assets. To manage assets on behalf of a minor. For special needs children. Managing assets for someone who is not capable of managing their own affairs. For those over 65 who are concerned about potential litigation around the estate. Second or third marriages, especially when kids are involved. Perhaps to pass on a business or for charitable uh, intentions, ecological gifts, or especially if you want to receive the income from the investments while you're alive. Well, Jim, these are very helpful uses of trusts. If, in fact, uh, I can see how they might be more useful than many of our listeners might have thought before. We don't have enough time to go into all the detail, but could you tell us briefly about a few of the trusts that are commonly used? Well, first I want to suggest that people consult their legal advisors for their best options. Okay. So aside from testamentary trusts that we spoke of before, here are four uh, of the more common trusts that, that I come across. The first is called an alter ego or joint partner trust and can be used by Canadians over 65 to hold assets that bypass provincial probate fees on debt. While rates are different across the different provinces in, in this country, in BC we're generally looking at around 1.4% for probate. I think this is an important one. Okay. Spousal trusts are, are, are useful if they're established on debt as an effective way to provide financially for your surviving spouse. Well, you can ensure some or all of the capital goes to the children. Then there's the Charitable Remainder Trust, which allows for capital to go to a named charity upon your death, but you can receive the income from those investments while you're alive. Then there's a Henson Trust, and sometimes considered for special needs children so that they don't lose their social benefits. In short, trusts can be a very useful wealth management tool, but they're just not for the extremely rich.
That's point well taken. And I know that you would like our listeners to understand that this was not supposed to be a comprehensive in, you know, to be comprehensive in nature and that they'll actually need to speak with their professional advisors before implementing any of these topics that we've talked about concerning trusts. Thank you. You're listening to Boomer Life on CL 650, and I'm Joanne Sutton. Today, we're speaking with Jim Doyle, Senior Financial Consultant with Investors Group. If you're wondering how a trust might benefit you in addressing your estate planning needs, well, then I would encourage you to give Jim a phone call. To learn how Jim Doyle can help you with your financial situation, call him at 604 682 5431 or you can email him at jim.doyle at investorsgroup.com are you aware of the upcoming changes in the financial services industry that could actually impact your plan stay tuned jim brings us up to speed and offers his tips on what you might be missing out in conversations that you're having with your current advisor. That's all next on Boomer Life on CL 650. Celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CL 650.